Hi, the fellow passenger. Hi, Ned Rush. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> it's all right. A bit cold outside, but it's nice and cozy in the studio. How about you? It's uh, a little bit too warm in here. I might have to turn the heating off in a minute because, as I said earlier, I blast the heat. I'll see how I get on. We are going to talk about melodies. Yes. Sort of. Yes. Tell me Tell me about them. Shall we give... Yeah. <laughs> I think this is worth a little bit of a background story. So we did the More Kicks Than Friends chat the other week and i think i find the melody melodic parts of making music tricky and i can make something that sounds coherent but it maybe doesn't have as much as as much excitement as i would like and someone on the call i can't remember who pointed it out it might have been broken semitone who said Ah, but if you just play within the scale, you just don't get those sort of spicy notes. And then Ned Rush introduced me to something absolutely great. So what did you introduce me to? Well, if if my memory serves, I think it was the idea of you just transpose whatever it is that you're doing, whatever scale you're currently in. If you're kind of going round and round with some sort of melodic idea that's in a certain scale and and you're, you're not necessarily approaching it from a, you know, like a kind of harmonic structure like you would with like a song or something. Um, it's more kind of like a, a kind of riff or a vamp or some sort of groove, but you kind of want to take it in a different direction. Um, then like just transposing it can sometimes come up with interesting things. Like if you just kind of pitch the whole sequence up a minor third or down a minor third or something or just somewhere else completely and then what can happen is that um obviously the whole sort of tonality of it changes drastically but in the process you can find these similarities where you know you might move your current scale to your new scale and that new scale has actually got some of the notes that's in the old one so you can kind of find these ways to kind of glue them together and that's sometimes where, for me personally, I've been able to come up with interesting, like set melodic ideas to kind of get them to work with each other. Um, I went away during the week after to play around with it. And I was thinking about it because I think that was as much of an introduction as I got to that concept. And I was playing around with it and realized that if you take minor pentatonic scale in D sharp, which I sort of use all the time. In other words, it's just the black keys, everyone. If you're not in there, that's probably the only scale that I can that I can remember. Um, and if you write a melody in that, like either it's chords or there is a group of notes and it sounds fine. But then if you just take a section of your, a section of a bar, or if you have four bars, you take one bar, and you shift everything up or down because you know if you've written it within the scale you know that that group of notes work together that's going to sound fine and even if you pitch all of those notes up the relationship between those notes is still the same but it's not necessarily in the scale but those notes will sound nice together and then i was taking that concept of doing that as well like as long as i pitch an entire section in the same way but as in like the melody the bass whatever chords i have if all of them pitch in the same way all of a sudden i just ended up in super interesting territory it was not always good but it was always it, it was sort of an, an element of surprise so you can still when you make something and the listener might expect a change but the change that is happening is unexpected, but it's still going to sort of work together because the relationship between the notes is still the same. Yeah, indeed, yeah. Interesting. And so you did post something on Discord where I think maybe you had demonstrated that. I you, didn't listen to that yet. Is that, could we listen to that? 
right now? Yes, I would say one of them, yeah, well, we can, we can do. I can't remember. One of them has definitely got more of it in, in it than the other. Because I'm obviously working on, and I know you do too, how can you weave that into a, um, in a sort of generative manner in like when you're making generative music and that's what I was trying that in hindsight that is just random stuff it sounds crap <laughs> but the I, I i have developed this further i think this was sort of just in an early example that i did and that was the recording that i posted on the discord it was sort of a generative example so i think the pitching was completely random rather than being the sort of three semitones which i've also discovered you talked about that that tends to have a nice quality to that transition it's quite um it, it, it's sort of noticeably drastic, but in quite a satisfying way. And yeah, like I say, depending on what scale you're transposing from and to, um, then, mm. you know, along the way, I mean, I cut my, my brain isn't always very good at thinking about these things really quickly, but like, I mean, if I was, if I was doing something in, um, let me just see C D E F and then we go yeah so actually if i um if i was doing something in like c major uh all mm. the white notes and then i moved that up to d sharp major then d sharp major has got an f in it and so does so does c major so they share mm. like notes which means that there's there's some there, there, there there's like a tonality that you can find that they have in common but you can kind of move everything around it um, if that sort of makes sense. And that's kind of like for me where it, it can get quite interesting. And indeed D sharp major also has a G in it, I think. Am I looking at D sharp? Yeah, so already there's two notes that, that, that those two scales have in common. So, and they're both the fourth and the fifth, which is kind of interesting. So from C major, you're going from F and G, which is the fourth and the fifth. And then you, if you go to D sharp, then that's the second and the third, I think. I'm doing this on the keyboard, so I might, everything I might be saying might be nonsense because I'm no keyboard player. But uh, you get the idea. <laughs> but, but, but when you... If you write music, is it literally like you put... You, you draw the north notes out, you play them on the keyboard, and then do you go manually and do the transitioning, or how do you do that? I probably would do it... Because um, I, I, I can't play the keyboard. On the guitar, I can do it, like, fine. Um, but if I was working with MIDI, then probably I would have come up with the sequence first and then I would just move all the MIDI up. Um, maybe I could try and do that right but now. But do you, how, how, what do you do? What, what sort of duration do you shift the scale or transpose everything? Is it like for an entire section? Is it for just for a bar or how how often would you change like when you play around and using this or do you just use it as an accent at some point during the track or yeah i mean i think i would it, it would sort of make sense i i don't know i guess whatever feels right but i suppose it would kind of make sense to do some movement yeah i i, I don't know i guess every four bars or just when something kind of felt right like it, it's like it's getting to a point mm. where right now i need to move this somewhere else um and i suppose that's really all all to like to do with like the context or whatever is like on your mind at that point in terms of i realized when i was doing this and i wanted to affect multiple channels so if you have a bass line and a melody and everything just needs to shift in the same manner i i, I took you, you take the um, 
the scale plugin um, and you choose you give all the different channels the same scale and then you put a note plugin after it um, allowing you to pitch everything that is coming through the right scale and then you have to have a max for live device or if you're using I suppose a MIDI controller or something that in one go you can change this transpose the scale on all channels at the same time yeah that's um that's an interesting way to do it then you've kind of got like hands-on okay, show, control yeah show me show me what you got so I've just, draw, I've just demo. drawn in this whatever this is that was quite loud i apologize not the most exciting thing in the world let's actually uh go down an octave and i might maybe can you hear that okay i can hear it and then maybe like i could just make the notes have a little bit more Going around and around and around a little bit, blah, blah blah blah. So maybe what I'll do is I'll um I'll take a copy of that. I'll turn the scale off. So now I'm back to um just normal chromatic, and then I'll just select them all and just go up one, two, three, and see what that's like. Yeah. I've always thought it's kind of got quite a dramatic cinematic thing about it. It's it's a bit jazz as well, but at the same time, with certain types of things, it can it's 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 quite a dramatic shift. Um, both in the sort yes, of the theoretical yeah. sense and just in sort of how it sounds to me. It's quite like a whoa, what's just happened? <laughs> So I could kind of like look at both of these together if I make one a different color and see if we can see both of them. Um, just to see if there's like anything that's kind of similar. So here I can see that there are two notes that are the same. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Is that the only one? I mean, that's just... No, no, one. one there were two up, two up. There's also the same notes. Yeah, the... Oh, yeah, and here... The D, same yeah. notes there and and, the and F, here yeah the f yes and the g so already i could be looking at that and thinking well i could take those two notes as like the some sort of mel melodic centerpiece for the for the for the chord transition the chord change mm. and i know that they're going to work over both of them so that's when you can start to find kind of like interesting joins <laughs> but let's let's just try a little experiment so take make another copy of one of those clips up there and then you do not three semitones you do something else like it could be seven or without thinking just like transpose it all in one direction yeah. so we could go actually let's do the top one so let's go to this one let's make this one yellow and then yeah let's turn this off so this is what we started with. So I could go, I'll go down. One, two, yeah. three. So in my in my theory is at least like if you just play this on its own, this is still going to sound fine. This is going to sound like the original, but you know, a bit a bit darker. So if you just just play that. Not the not the most interesting sound in the world. Maybe I should pick a different instrument. No, but that. still quite nice actually that transition i wonder if you can do a bad transition if you if there is a a particular number of steps that just becomes really dissonant even though like the transition the, it can be played in its own right but when you transition from the original scale to the transposed one if we if it would always sound more or less quite good or if there are really crappy ones do you know that i think that's just all a matter of taste 
Yeah, I think. <laughs> and also, I think if you start repeating something, your brain is just going to accept it. Eventually. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, if it, if it's just going to go, I mean, if I was going up a semitone each on every bar, then that would be a little bit kind of yeah. like, where's this going? But like in a certain context, that could work kind of well as good as well. Mm. It could be a build up to like another section of the song. Everything's going. Yeah, and then. I su- dubstep drop i was yeah <laughs> but i was i was thinking if if the um, let's say there are some some uh relationships that would sound better like so for example the three semitones is something that does work that you do a you just have the original scale as in the original clip and then you use the note plugin in a um in a midi effects rack where you have multiples of them but one is set to three semitones another one is set to was it minus three that happened to sound quite good and you have a few ones so if you're making something generative you can you pick one at random but out of a selection that's going to be quite pleasant but you don't quite know which one it's going to pick does that Uh, make sense yeah 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 so um I guess so. If you just take actually, the, which which is the original clip here? Just this top one. So yeah. I'll okay. Mo- I'll so move if you that just to like plop, another, plop a, whoop, hang on, I'll move that to like yeah. another slot and turn off the follow action. So. So what you're thinking of is something like you have like an instrument rack of all your various transpositions, and then you rand- it randomly yeah, 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 selects yes. one. Yes, it picks. So you you pick a few that you like. Maybe that's going to take too long to demo now, but that's exactly it. So you can put it in a generative context, but stopping it from derailing so much that it's just going to sound crazy. So I'll have one here that is three Three up, and then I'll duplicate that. Yeah. And that one can be minus three, and then I'll duplicate that one, and that can be minus... Pick a number. One could be zero as well. That just that just like the original pitch. Oh yeah, I'll need one that's uh, nothing. Yeah. Um, let's duplicate this one and let's have this one at minus seven, and then we'll have this one at plus seven, and then we'll go into yeah. the uh, we'll go into the chain selector. Oh, I did that wrong. Let's go, you have to drag the them all out. Okay, right, and then let's map that. And then we could pull in um we could pull in an LFO and tell the LFO to oh, I'm gonna have to put it all the way at the end. Or you could you can just you can just press the random as well there on the chain. Good point. That's a good idea. Oh yeah. do it too often no want to i think like that's nice, one of the things to have its own little kind of bit of air time yes i think so too that's i think one of the big areas with the track that i played that i'd been working on was literally like you were doing now you sort of press then it sounds too random maybe you can you do something where it plays the original pitch most of the time and then you deviate to a different one for for a while and then it returns i suppose it can be different things or that it just progresses i would say do that with the follow actions so i actually just yes. set up some follow actions here and basically what they should yeah. do is that they will go from each one will play four times around i think i can't remember what i said four times and then it's going to tra- it's going yeah, to it's going to the original yeah. then it's going to transpose up three semitones back to the original and then down three semitones and then back to the original I didn't I didn't get a yeah, chance to sort okay. of look to see if all of them had similar notes in. It's a bit of a eyesore to try and work out, but again, there's those ones there. Uh there's these ones here now. Um, you know, it's just sort of sort of just quite interesting to see if they share any notes. These two here. Oh look, mm. there we go. All three. All th- 
That must be. Them have got, that's the magic yeah, number. So then. the note D. If we played a D over all of that, all of these changes and perhaps some other ones, it's always going to work. They should all. It, it, it will sit nicely over all of them. Let's just see how it sounds. from the start. idea yes three absolutely. drastically different scales that have they've, they've, they've all yeah. got d in so you can and there's probably other notes in there as well you just have to go and find them and then you can kind of I mean, glue in, them in, together with by share by exploring their like common what they have in common you know maybe i mean could you say that there's obviously a root note in the original scale but in the context of multiple scale not multiple scales but transpositions that the new root note is the d in this particular case because that's the one that they have in common or maybe i don't know could you do like okay so if you're going to tune your kick tune it to the d or something yeah i mean i could put like well because so if you want to yeah we could do it with um let's do it with a bit of baseline context so for this clip i'll just draw in i'll i'll, I'll use the arpeggiator to to make it a little bit more so I can go faster and then uh, actually let's just copy that one and then that one this one can be three down um so let's get let's get some funky arpeggiator business in. okay no they've obviously all got to start at the same time to set the follow actions nearly there these things nearly these there. things don't happen overnight uh what did i say next four let's go four times okay now let's try it should work because they've all got d in let me just yes. check that i'm not going mad d let's turn the scale off here but it, yeah it doesn't sound out of d. tune it's weird d they've d. all got d in d. yeah so you could play d over all three of those trans transpositions and it won't be out of tune or yeah hmm <laughs> Do we know any artists or anything like, I don't know, commercial tracks where this is sort of used as if someone wants to just run Spotify or whatever and just see what 
Well, kind of blue. Um, so what about Miles Davis? Is absolutely. St- I mean, but that's. Um, you know that starts in that's in D well it's C major I think it's D Dorian so it's the second scale of C major but then they just move they go up one semitone um, and then it's pretty much that throughout the rest of the song I think um, and you can really kind of hear it when they're kind of when the solos come in and they're sort of soloing over that change and trying to find the ways to join it together and stuff mm. like that that's the first thing that comes to my head there's many John Barry used to do it loads and loads but in in, the, in that example, how often do they do that shift? How often do they do the transpose? Is it only the once, and then it sort of continues in the same way? Or yeah, I'd say in in so what it's probably it's quite a long time. You know, there's it's enough for like everyone to ha- almost have a whole solo. So I'd say it's something like at least sixteen bars before they do the the change, and then that's maybe eight bars, and then they go back. Um, so you know how often you do the change. Um, in something like what we were just listening to, which is a bit of some floaty electronica, I would probably give them quite a quite a long time. You know, I yeah. wouldn't do it like every bar, but we could we could no. see how it sounds. <laughs> or, or like you you could could you do could you do something where let's say it's an eight bar thing, but just the last bar in the eight bar loop will just pick another one and then. It will go back again, so you know that there will be a surprise on the eighth, and then it will just go back again. Yeah, so that would be if so. That would just or be that like, might be um, tricky to do in follow actions, or unless you fake it. I don't think so. I think it. I think it would just be you would um, just approach this differently. So if I, I've got to move the zoom thing out of the way. If I was to maybe, I won't do it with all of them. I'll just do it with the chords or something. So. I take a copy of this, move these all down here, and then I can sort of say, this is my top one. Let's delete that one and have these two. So I could say for this one, the follow action can be play three times, and then these other two will play once, and then they'll go back yeah. to the first. Oh, and then yes. this one yeah. just goes to other. So it will play yes. for three bars and then jump to one of these other ones that will play to, for one bar, and then it will go back. they change every bar (laughs) or we could go linked off and do it every half a bar hang on let's do it let's do them in order so that they go to the next one that's a little bit much for me yes yeah that's changing too often it's almost like you want to have the continuity and then you just sort of throw some spice into the mix and then it sort of just slides back again. Yeah. I, I like the idea you were saying there about the notes in common and maybe you can use those to create a nice transition between the transpositions, that they will be the sort of connecting notes between the two. Yeah, that's that's kind of when it How... starts to get like you it gets exploratory um in a rewarding way because it's kind of just like it's sort of like a little game you can play it's like oh let's see which ones they've got Mm -hmm. in common and then because it you know depending on what kind of transposition you do you're going to be very limited to the amount of notes that are available which in some ways is quite a good way to think about approaching melodies is to you know a lot of the best melodies are all quite simple and there's not many notes so it's yeah. kind of like you, you, you take like a simple kind of way of approaching chords and harmony or tonality and stuff like that. Um, and then it kind of gives you something that's like, hey, you've got these notes, take them away and maybe come up with something melodic to to make them work over all of them. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Could you do, I mean, I, I have no experience with this, but could you do exactly the same way rather than thinking about transposition that you actually you pick a completely different scale, which probably have, that needs to have some notes in common, but it's a different scale and will give you a completely different vibe. So you have a part of the song that follows one scale, 
then you do the transition with the notes that it has in common and then you just get a completely different feeling which will feel co coherent does that make sense yeah um i think i don't know if it would work it's just too complicated so, my brain explodes no it's just you just have to sort of do a little bit of um so it, actually with with ableton's um scale snapping in the uh, in live 11 in the midi editor um this actually wouldn't take too long so i've got this first idea which is kind of in c major mm. um if i take a copy of that give it a different color and then go into this clip turn the scale on and choose c minor uh turn the scale on so i can see where some notes aren't in the scale right so they, yeah, this note here is e that's not in c minor so we can just move that to another note move that to another note Move that one to another note and move that one to there. There's another one in the middle. Oh, yeah. Oh, that. where did it go? I moved it. Let's put it there. Um, okay, let's turn these follow actions off and sort of hear the difference. too much uh wibbly wobbly funk on it <laughs> that you can't really not really hearing the uh subtle shift but you know inevitably but if, if you, you go from major just to do, minor then but just do 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 like a, a a really just pick i don't know phrygian or something i don't know how that would shift and just to see like and even in a different key like let's just pick something that's that's just very different but hopefully we'll have some notes in okay hand. let's go for f sharp yeah. uh, um Pelong Tembung <laughs> towards the bottom. This one. Yeah, try that one. I have no idea what Pelog Tembung is. That's interesting. <laughs> right. So yeah. So there's. It's a, it looks like looks like a pentatonic. Oh, and there's a big gap there. That's interesting. Uh, all right. So let's just move that one to there. That one to there. Uh, let's move these two to here, and that one to like up here or something. And then there's some more here. That one to there, that one to there. Let's put that one there and that one here or something. And then if we turn... They're still in the middle there. Yeah. These two. And then there's one further up there. That's it. Brilliant. It's quite good, that scale snapping thing, isn't it? So... Yeah, I keep forgetting about it, but yes. Yeah. I was about to say like my brain first time around it's like oh that's a bit weird but then then you just accept it because the notes t sort of work together in a weird yeah way. i mean if you keep repeating stuff it just gets sort of <laughs> becomes fine palatable Do you, uh, could, could that be a good challenge to see like how far can you push that and that theory still how works far can you like, repeat just repeat things? i think strictly in the context of music it's totally acceptable Something that we did not say at the beginning of this video was that this is part of a set of three videos. So after having discussed this concept of transposing, Ned Rush and the fellow passenger will go off and create an entire track. The other will not be allowed to listen to it just yet. 
we will record our own videos showing in detail how the process we're going through, the thinking, etc. And then there will be the second episode, or depending on which order we're calling it, but we will meet up and we will together listen to each other's work and we will talk a little bit about it and see what methods we were using and the ideas we sort of took from from this conversation and then you will also on each of our channels you will also be able to find the detailed walkthrough of the creation of those tracks um yeah so that would be a sort of a yeah a, a three three part thing so this was the first part and I don't know exactly when the next one will come out, but I'm sure both of us will announce that through our social media channels. Let's say the or next couple of weeks things. or something like that. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I'm going to beat you to it. Okay. You probably will because <laughs> I'm so lazy. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm interested in this and I'm already kind of, um, yeah, getting excited about things to, to try and, um, I'm interested also to see the way you approach it. I'm thinking maybe we might go in slightly different directions, which is good. Um, so I, yeah, I'm in, I'm excited. Maybe this will help me taking my melodic parts to the next level, or actually, you know, putting something into practice that I usually don't do. So it's going to be good. Yeah, likewise. I think I might sort of. It, it, it's it's a it's an interesting challenge, um, and yeah, I I have no idea what I'm what I'm going to do. But uh, the, the, it's a solid framework of an idea to, uh, to mm. start with. So, yeah. Let's see where it goes. So, let's say, see you next time, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>